attention you might have already heard about it by now because transformers uses attention and the title of the paper in which it was introduced is attention is all you need which suggests that we don't need rnns anymore which was the most dominant type of model to understand the text data but the transformer solely built on top of attention proved to be superior it quickly came to people's attention and all the large language models like gpt3 and bolt and the recent dali2 by openai uses transformers so this shows how powerful attention is but attention has been here since 2014 when badanov first introduced it it was born to solve a major issue in neural machine translation which we will be discussing in this video first we will see how machine translation used to happen before attention and then learn about badanov attention and implement it with tensorflow as well Let's discuss how machine translation was done before attention came into existence. We will be doing English to Hindi translation as an example. First we will provide an input sentence in English to the encoder. The encoder will encode that sentence into a fixed dimensional vector known as the context vector. Then this context vector is then used by the decoder to decode the target phrase in Hindi. As you can see a machine translation system consists of two major components the encoder and the decoder. The context vector on the other end is a matrix containing all the context from the English sentence. As a result the quality of the translation will be determined by the quality of our context vector. This is why we aim to create better context vectors. This is where the problem starts. The encoder and the decoder you see are actually RNNs, recurrent neural networks. At that time RNNs were the only mainstream networks capable of accurately understanding text data. So if I have a sentence like can I help you? I can give it to RNN like this. The first word or token will go into the RNN and the hidden state is output. Then this hidden state will be used to calculate the next hidden state and this will go on till the end. If you want to know more about how RNNs work, I would recommend you read this article first. But from a higher level, you just need to understand that the RNN outputs a hidden state at every time step. Hence, the last hidden state will have the memory of all the previous tokens. This is how RNN deals with temporal data or data in which order matters. Therefore, this last hidden state is nothing but our context vector, which I showed you in this high-level diagram. Now we know that we have to give this context vector to the decoder. But where's the decoder? The decoder is also a RNN exactly like the encoder. But what we will do is take this last hidden state of the encoder and initialize the decoder's initial state with it. If you look into TensorFlow's documentation, you can clearly see the initial hidden state of the RNN is random. But for the sake of machine translation, the decoder must know the context of an English sentence to translate it into Hindi. And we do it by initializing it by encoder's last hidden state, aka context vector. Now we will give the first token to the decoder. Unlike the English sentence, the Hindi sentence will begin with a special token start. It is required because when we run the inference, we have no idea what the first token is. Therefore, we will only give it the start special token and it will do the rest of the translation. After giving the start token, the decoder will output the first hidden state. But how will we know which word was predicted by the decoder? For that, we will feed this hidden state to a feed-forward network with as many neurons as the Hindi vocabulary has. For example, if our Hindi vocabulary has only 10 words, the hidden state H1 will be passed through this feed-forward network with 10 neurons, and a matrix will be generated on which we can use simple argmax to determine which word is predicted. The first token the decoder should predict is kya which means that the brightest neuron in the animation or the neuron with the greatest value should output kya. We have the actual tokens during training, so we can compare our prediction to them and calculate the loss for backpropagation. So how do you predict the next token now? You can suggest that we should pass the predicted token kya to the next time step, but what if the wrong token is predicted instead of it? Should we still pass an incorrectly predicted token to the next time step? The answer is no. If you pass a wrong prediction to the next time step, it will ruin all future predictions which we do not want. To correct this, we use a simple approach known as teacher forcing. I would like to explain this with the help of a fantastic article by Wen Chun Wong. He has given the example of image captioning, but we can apply it to our example as well. The caption for this image is two people reading a book. If we give this to an RNN without the teacher forcing, the start token will output 2, which is correct, and then we will give this to the next time step, which will output bird, which is incorrect. And if we continue to give bird to the next time step, it will predict flying. So the prediction is getting worse with each time step, just because of a single wrong prediction. 
However, with the teacher forcing, we use the ground truth tokens instead of passing the predicted token to the next time step. In this case, bold is an incorrect prediction, but we will input the ground truth token people instead of bold to ensure that the future words are correct and it does not mess up any longer. We can only use teacher forcing during training since we only have ground truth tokens during training. Because we don't have the ground truth tokens during the inference, we must use the without teacher forcing strategy. As you can see, we have successfully translated the English sentence to the Hindi sentence using encoder decoder architecture. But a while ago, I said, this is why we aim to create better context vectors. This is where the problem starts. So what's the problem? The problem is how we are creating the context vector. We are simply using encoder's last hidden state. This is why the RNN has to squeeze all the information from the English sentence into a single fixed dimensional matrix. This graph in Badanov's paper show how the model performs as the number of words in sentences increases. They use the blue school to check the quality and accuracy of the translation. When the total number of words is between 10 and 20, the RNN without attention or the architecture you just learned performs best. And after that, the translation gets worse with every new word. Why does this happen? Because the RNN does not have a very good history with long sequences. If I give it an extremely long sentence to translate, it will completely fail. If I wait for a second at the word he, it means Jeff. Since according to the context of the sentence, we are talking about Jeff, therefore it should be obvious that he means Jeff, but not for RNN. This article by Distal shows the memorization problem with animation. As I move one token forward at a time, it has a good grasp of 3 to 4 words behind it, but the words further out are absolutely blank, as if they never existed. This is referred to as the vanishing gradient problem, and attention is attempting to solve the vanishing gradient problem, and as the video progresses, you will see how elegantly attention solves this. But what is attention? The video that I showed at the beginning is a model made by Meta called Dino and the segment of dog you see here is an attention mask. Instead of focusing on every detail of the image, we can use attention to pay attention only to the relevant parts of the image. I would like to show you one more example of attention from the show, attend and tell paper. It aims to do image captioning. Here the caption of the image is, a woman is throwing a frisbee in a park. And when it predicts the word frisbee, it automatically focuses its attention on the frisbee in the image. Just like I am focusing your attention on the image, I have blurred all the unnecessary parts and focused your attention on that single image. You can also check the rest of the images, but it's crazy to see how attention has learned to identify things in an image that it has no prior knowledge of. But our goal is to apply attention to neural machine translation. From the paper, you can see this is what attention looks like. They have applied it to the English to French translation. Every French word attends to every other English word. This makes it possible to create complex relationships between languages, resulting in better translation. That's why attention proposes that instead of just using the last hidden state, we use all the hidden state at every encoder time step. But we will only take the first hidden state from the decoder. Using all this, we can predict the next Hindi token using attention. And since we are using the hidden states from the encoder, the RNN does not have to squeeze all the information into the last hidden state. And our final context vector won't be fixed dimensional now. It will change depending on the words in the sentence. The first step is to calculate the alignment score. The alignment score means how much attention each Hindi token should pay to every other English token. According to the transformers terminology, this Hindi token is a query and the English token are values. Just like a database which is a set of values on which we can make queries and get the desired rows, similarly the Hindi token will make a query on English tokens, which are values. And by using attention, we will learn with time how much attention every Hindi token should pay to English tokens. So we can only focus on words that matters the most. In the scoring function, the encoder and decoder hidden state will first pass through a fully connected layer. These two layers are important because they will learn attention. Then after passing through these layers, the hidden state will sum and pass via a tan -h activation function followed by a single neuron layer and the output will be the score. I know that it may be difficult to grasp why this set of operation produced this score. That's why let's code this with Python. It will help you to understand how this works. First, I will randomly generate English and Hindi states. Instead of actually passing it through an RNN, it will save us time. The English hidden states or the hidden states from the encoder aka keys or values have a shape like this. The first axis means the batch cells or the number of sentences. I have kept it at 1, meaning there is only one English sentence with 4 words. The last axis is 5, which is the number of units in the RNN. 
and the same with the Hindi hidden states or the hidden states from the decoder aka Curry. The only difference in shape is that there is only one word in here, which you know, in our case both the key and value are the same, so I have just copied the key tensor as the value, so step 1 is over. Step 2 is to pass the query and key through the dense layer. In TensorFlow, it is as easy as calling the dense layer and giving any units you like. I have given 8. And then the query and key are passed through the dense layer and the output is stored in the same variable. As you can see, the shape is the same. Only the last axis has changed. Instead of 5, it is 8 now, which is the unit of the dense layer. Heading to step 3, here we have to sum up query and key, but we can't do it simply by query plus key as it will result in an incorrect shape. We want the each Hindi token to attend to every other English token, that's why the shape we want is this. The first axis is batch size, the second is the number of words in Hindi, the third is the number of words in English and the last is the units. So in our case, it should be 1, 1, 4, 8. That's why we do a smart trick, we will add an empty axis at position 2 in the query and an empty axis at the position 1 in the key and if we sum now it will result in the correct shape after summing i have given it to the tan h activation function so all the scores are in the range to of minus one to one the only problem that remains is that this tensor is in four dimensions and this eight is not even needed now so to get rid of this last axis eight we will pass this tensor through a single neuron layer which is as easy as keeping units equal to one on the tensor for dense layer and if we give query plus key to this dense layer it has changed the last axis from 8 to 1 and then we can simply squeeze the last axis and the final score is in the desired shape. Calculating attention weights is as easy as giving the score to the softmax activation function so the last axis will always sum to 1 and the output is the attention weights. The shape of attention weights is exactly like the shape of the score as we are not manipulating the shape in any way we are just applying softmax. We can also plot the attention weights. The part that is giving more attention is highlighted in red. Our data was random that's why this attention plot doesn't make much sense but in reality I trained a neural machine translation system and you can see the prediction is exactly equal to the actual Hindi sentence and this is what the attention plot looks like. Each Hindi word is attendant to every other English word. More red means more core between words and vice versa. The final context vector which will be used to predict the next Hindi token is calculated by multiplying the attention weight matrix by values. The result is the final context vector. We can see in the official implementation of my neural machine translation that after passing the query key and value to the attention, it returned the context vector and attention weights to me. We will concatenate the context weight and RNN output before passing it to the last dense layer. The dense layer has neurons as the same size as the vocab says. As a result, we can do a simple argmax to the output of this layer to determine which Hindi token our decoder has predicted. So this was Badanov attention. I know it might be a little difficult to understand it the first time. That's why I recommend you to play with those Jupyter notebooks on your own. It will help you understand this more. For a recap, first we only used the last hidden state of the encoder and used it as the context vector and then we initialize the decoder's initial hidden state with the context vector and then we come across the vanishing gradient problem of the RNN so the last hidden state cannot summarize long sequences of sentence which result in poor translation. The attention came to the picture and said instead of just using the last hidden state, let's use all the hidden states. Then to create a single context vector from all the hidden states, we gave it to the scoring function and it returned us a score which after the softmax gave us attention weights. It tells us how each Hindi token attends to every other English token so from our Jeff example, it will learn to correlate that he means Jeff here. Multiplying attention weights with values will give us the final context vector which we can then use to predict the next token. So I hope you might have understood what attention is. In some future videos we will discuss how attention is used in images and videos as well. Attention is at the heart of transformers. So if you understand this video completely, understanding transformer is even more easier for you now. The only thing is that they use self attention which isn't explicitly covered in this video. But it's easy. In self attention all the queries, keys and values are the same sentence. In my github repo I have created a sentiment analysis model which uses self attention. You can see I have given the query key and value the same sentence x. It is the IMDB review and the last dense layer has two neurons for the positive or negative sentiment. It achieved about 71% accuracy on test data which is almost good as I have not used dropout or regularization. You can try it and if you have more accuracy then pull the changes on github. The transformer has its own attention known as scaled dot product attention. If I make a video on transformers, I will cover 
स्केल डॉर प्रोडक्ट अटेंशन इन इट एज वेल एज मल्टी हेड अटेंशन सो दैट्स इट फॉर दिस वीडियो थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग एंड आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो